Welcome to The Health Cast. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and joining me today is a South African pediatrician, Dr. Daniel Azar, here to tell us a little bit more and deepen our understanding regarding childhood cancer. Dr. Daniel Azar, welcome to The Health Cast. Thank you very much for having me. I'm looking forward to talking a bit about cancer, mostly trying to raise awareness of the early warning signs of cancer in children so that we can pick it up as soon as possible. We know that approximately 400,000 children are diagnosed with cancer every year, and it sounds like a big number, but it is actually still considered a very rare cause of illness in children. So cancer isn't very common. So it's not something that, you know, every lump and bump and fever isn't cancer. It's rare. However, we need to be aware of it. If we treat it early, there are more treatment options available to you. And it's more likely that you'll be able to cure your particular type of cancer. Um, so that's right. The numbers are closer to 400,000 children on the latest WHO um, research. Um, and, as, right. and that's worldwide. So yes, relatively small numbers, and it's a relatively rare diagnosis. Um, but important nonetheless, because fatal, if not picked up early. People often want to understand what childhood cancer is and how it differs from adult cancer. Dr. Zhao, would you mind telling our listeners what exactly childhood cancer is? So cancer is cancer, and it happens in children and adults. But the main differences are the types of cancer and the risk factors involved in those presentations. In adults, the most common types of cancer are cancer of the breast, cancer of the lung, prostate, and colorectal cancer. Um, this top five is extremely rare in children. Uh, we don't see cancer of the breast, lungs, prostate, colon, or rectum in children very commonly at all. The risk factors associated with these adult cancers uh, are mostly lifestyle related, smoking, diet, uh, and exercise. Um, and in children, the risk factors are a little bit less, uh, understood. Um, cancers, all cancers have a genetic component to them, um, in adults and in children, but in children, this plays a much bigger role in the development of cancers than do environmental factors. So and that will lead us to um, just talking a bit more about the most common types of childhood cancer. Yeah, please, Dr. Zah, if you mind elaborating on some of the most common types of childhood cancers present. Cancers in children can be split into two broad categories, and those are cancers of the blood and blood cells and solid tumors. The most common type of cancer in children are cancers of the blood. And the two subsets is acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute, acute myeloid leukemia. Then so in terms of solid tumors, the most common solid tumor in children are brain cancers, followed by lymphomas, neuroblastomas, which is a cancer that occurs in the abdomen, cancers of the kidney, in cancers of the bone. So by far the most common is blood-borne cancers, but second to that would be brain tumors. So cancers of the blood, you could think about them in this way. You start your life as a fetus, you develop, you're born as a baby, you develop um, as an infant, then you become a toddler, preschooler, and eventually an adult. And through those stages, your body develops. Now the blood cells are similar. They start as an um, immature blood cell in the bone marrow, and they grow into a mature adult cell in the blood. And along that path of growth, defects in the genetic makeup of those blood cells cause them to become different, to proliferate more, to become more numerous in number, um, or to stop growing completely. Uh, and that's what causes blood cancers. Then solid tumors, are related to particular organs and particular cells within those organs that grow at a rate that isn't normal um, and the cell structure changes 
to an abnormal cell structure. And the symptoms of cancer are either from that organ they're not functioning, occupying too much space, um, you know, causing obstructions because of the sheer size of it, um, or secreting hormones that might cause symptoms as well. Then Dr. Zar, you did mention that not every bump and lump is always cancer. What are some of the signs and symptoms of childhood cancer that parents should just be on the lookout for or aware of? I think the main take home message is that cancer is rare, but we need to be on the lookout for it and get a doctor's opinion when you notice um, warning signs of cancer. Okay. So a good way to remember it is an ac acronym called Saint Siluan. Saint Siluan. S-I-L-U-A-E. Okay. The S stands for to seek medical help. If you find the the I stands for the eye. So if there's any white spot in the eye, if there's a squint that wasn't there before, or there's partial blindness or complete blindness that's new, or any bulging of the eye itself, these are definite red flags for cancer, and you should seek medical help as soon as possible. The L in St. Silouin stands for lump. So lumps in the body are often normal. And these are little glands that you might feel in the neck or maybe under the arm of a child. And they usually occur because of viral infections or bacterial infections in the ear, the throat, the nose, which are very common childhood illnesses. Lumps that are larger than one centimeter are usually uh, warrant medical evaluation, okay? Or any lumps that you feel in the abdomen or pelvis of a child, any lumps felt mm -hmm. on the limbs of a child, arms or legs, or any lumps that might be felt or see in the genital region of a child would warrant medical evaluation. The next is U for unexplained. It is an unexplained fever for more than two weeks. You need to see your doctor. Unexplained loss of weight. Unexplained pallor. So if a child is very pale and you've not really identified a cause for it. Unexplained fatigue. And unexplained easy bruising or bleeding. Children will get cuts and bumps. but if they're bruising for no apparent reason, bleeding for no apparent reason, it will warrant medical attention as well. The next is A. A stands for aching. Aching bones, aching joints, aching back, or easily broken bones. A very common uh, childhood issue is growing pains. Growing pains, you know, are not cancer. However, if a pain that a child complains of gets worse over the a couple of days to weeks, does not get better, is not relieved by simple analgesia, and wakes the child up at night, these are worrying features, and it does warrant medical attention. The last is in for neurological. If there is any change in the way a child walks, in the way the child balances, or if there's any check loss of balance, or if there's a change in the way a child speaks, those are worrying signs. We also need to get a seem to you if there's any milestone regression, a headache that lasts for more than one week, or if the head looks like it's growing too fast. So when we identify one of these features, as a parent or as a doctor, you need to think about cancer. We're not saying it is cancer, but if you don't think about it, you may not be able to identify it early enough. And if in doubt, it's always better to seek medical help and get a professional opinion. That being said, it's also important for your child to have regular checkups at a doctor, either a general practitioner or a pediatrician, because these things are often looked for on examination 
you cannot screen for childhood cancer necessarily, but you can look for early warning signs and investigate them if necessary. Then Dr. Azar, taking it a step further as well, you did briefly touch on it. How is childhood cancer then diagnosed? Right, so the definitive diagnosis of all cancer is through biopsy. We have to be able to look at it under a microscope and say that this cell is cancerous and do various testing um, on those biopsy specimens. But that is often the last kind of step in the diagnostic approach. Initial testing to kind of identify whether or not this is cancer would involve blood tests and imaging. Imaging in the form of CT scans and MRIs, and blood tests in the form of blood counts and certain biochemical profiles of the blood. Now it's these tiny little humans getting this very aggressive disease. What is the prognosis with childhood cancer? Right, and that's, I think, where childhood cancer differs from adult cancer is that there is a very good prognosis if detected early and if high level treatment can be sought after and, and can provide it to that child. Okay. So in high income countries, the prognosis, you know, there's about an 80% cure rate of all childhood cancers. Okay. Comparing that to low middle income countries, it drops to about 30%. And that's mostly because of two factors. One, children present later in low to middle income countries. And two, the resources are not available to provide the most optimal cancer treatment to most children in low middle income countries. So if we can detect it early, and if you receive the best treatment possible, there's a very good chance your cancer can be cured. In the United States, the latest five years survival rate for all childhood cancers is about 85%, whereas 50 years ago, it was around 58%. And that points to advances in treatment and detection of these malignancies. So there is definitely hope when you are diagnosed but there are a lot of factors that play a role in a particular child's chances of survival and cure. The type of cancer, the circumstances under which it was diagnosed, the treatment options available, the age of the child, the you know, various prognostic factors will play a role. Um, but those are just general numbers for cancers as a whole. It's actually amazing to think that their tiny bodies can tolerate chemotherapy and radiation that well. Yes. One of the most, you know, the, the, the most common causes of a child dying from cancer in lower middle income countries is either late presentation or the other alternative cause is toxicity of the treatment itself. However, on the whole, under well managed conditions, um, cancer therapy is tolerated by children. Um, and that's a testament to their resilience and the fact that they are growing bodies that can kind of fight back and grow back again, uh, you know, and these kids that are cured can live normal lives once treatment is complete. Then Dr. Zar, in your opinion, can childhood cancer be inherited or passed down in families? So it's not like um, you inherit the cancer, okay? There are genetic syndromes which you can inherit and cancers are more common in children with those syndromes. It's not like you can inherit lymphoma or you can inherit a Wilms tumor or a neuroblastoma, but you can inherit a genetic disorder that will then make you more prone to getting cancer. Some of these genetic disorders, uh, which our listeners may be familiar with, are things like Down syndrome or trisomy 21. In children with trisomy 21, acute lymphoblastic leukemias and acute myeloid leukemia are more common than in children who don't. In children with something called Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, 
Wolf's tumors or cancers of the kidney and the liver are more common. There is a genetic syndrome called Lee Frau Medi, where in which cancers as a whole are more common from childhood all the way through to adulthood. And this is where you see younger populations uh, with the disorder getting breast cancer and colorectal cancer and younger men. Um, and in all these conditions, there will either be symptoms of the genetic syndrome, as in Bigaman syndrome or trisomy 21, or there'll be a very strong family history of cancer. Um, and in that case, consultations will be undertaken to determine that particular fair risk of, of having cancer in children. Absolutely. We are moving into a world where genetic testing is becoming a lot more accessible as well. Dr. Zah, in your opinion, how does awareness contribute to improving the outcomes of children with childhood cancer? I think awareness is key, especially in the lower to middle income country, but in all settings. That's because if you detect cancer early enough, you've eliminated one of the prognostic. You know, late presentation often limits the amount of treatment you can receive to cure that cancer, and it leads to poor prognosis. So if we can prevent that, we, we are able to then control that fact and help children. So to be aware is to be able to look out for the signs mentioned, but more importantly, to seek professional help where you are concerned. Do not be afraid to do it because it's afraid that the doctor might tell you this. So this answer is rare, but you rather practice safe medicine to be a parent, to be vigilant and to, you know, look for these sites and get a professional opinion when they're there. And I think that's important and that's an, an important take. Definitely, Dr. Zah, then my favorite question, you probably know this one is coming, is to ask all doctors what inspired you to pursue a career in medicine, but more specifically pediatrics. I think it comes down to the fact that I love working with children. They're just so you know, uh, fun to work with. I mean, they get along with them. Um, I have a way with them where we can get consultation um, without too many tears and I enjoy the personality and both that brings, you know, with different ages of a child, bringing different chapters, different personality. Um, and that keeps you on your toes. And, um, the fact that children are very resilient, very, um, they can really bounce back from illnesses, um, makes it a rewarding job. And I think the fact that they, you know, they, they need someone to help them. They, you know, the children don't inflict illness upon themselves. You know, they are helpless, um, when sick and I enjoy medicine. I enjoy the science of it, but I also enjoy working with children. So to be able to use my skills and do something I love to help them is very rewarding to me. Dr. Zara, wrapping up our episode today, do you have any final thoughts regarding childhood cancer you'd like to leave with our listeners? I think the, the most important thing to remember is that childhood cancer is rare. Um, it's not something every child gets. But when you do have a diagnosis of cancer, it's life-changing. And to make the most of the treatment that you can receive, we need to be able to pick it up early. So in order to, you need to be aware of the warning signs of cancer and most importantly, get professional help when those signs appear. Definitely. Dr. Zahn, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. You're welcome. Wonderful insights from Dr. Daniel Azar. That wraps up today's episode regarding childhood cancer. This podcast is powered by GlobeMed UK. 
giving you access to the best doctors, treatments, and medical professionals worldwide.